I read a story in the news quite a few years ago about a child who was swallowed by a fish in Sweden or in, or in Switzerland, forget where it was, and, and eventually the fish um, regurgitated the child and the child survived. But the acids in the fish's stomach had taken all the color out of the child's skin, all the pigmentation, and the child was all white. Which, of course, reminds us of the story of Yaina and the whale. What happened there? God comes to Yaina because he is a prophet and says, I have a prophecy for you to deliver to the people of Nineveh. Large city, not Jewish, but they are misbehaving and they got to get their act together. So go to Nineveh and tell them that if they don't repent, then in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. Next thing we know, Jonah books a, uh, uh, a trip on a, on a ship and he leaves Israel. A storm breaks out. The ship is threatening to, to, uh, to overturn. And they ask Jonah, why aren't you praying to God like we are? each to their own God. Jonah says, uh, I am from the people who crossed the sea on foot and the sea dried up for them. So the sea doesn't scare me. This is all about my failure. I am running away from God. The storm is because of me. Throw me overboard and you'll all survive. They threw him overboard and the storm subsided. Now a fish swallows Jonah He's there for three days. And then the fish deposits him on dry land. And Jonah goes and delivers the prophecy to the people of Nineveh, and they all repent. And the city is saved. What exactly is the story? Why would Jonah run away when God sends him on a mission? And where was he running anyway? How do you get away from God? Every Jewish leader, every great Jewish leader, represents God to the people and the people to God. Very often, they are faced with a decision that they need to make. Are you going to favor the people or are you going to favor God? Religious thinking would, of course, dictate God comes first. Whatever God says, just obey God and you'll be fine. But a Jewish leader feels sometimes you have to sacrifice your relationship with God in favor of the people. If, if you need to protect the people, then you do it at all costs, including your spiritual benefits, your relationship with God. So here's what happened. God tells Yaina, deliver a prophecy to the people of Nineveh. Tell them to repent. Jonah knew that they would repent. And that would be held against the Jewish people because they've had many prophets and they still haven't repented. So Jonah says, I am going to be the cause of Jewish suffering? No way. It'll cost me the prophecy. I will have to give up being a prophet, but I'm willing to do that. I will not bring harm to my people. So where was he going? He was leaving Israel because outside of Israel, there is no prophecy. God saves him through the whale, puts him back on dry land, and says, go, it will not be held against the people. On the contrary, on Yom Kippur, when the people are asking for forgiveness, we will read the story of Jonah to show that God will forgive. God is always forgiving, ready to forgive. When Jonah heard that, then he was willing to deliver the prophecy. And sure enough, one prophecy, one prophet, one time, and they all repented. Because they are not the stiff-necked people, we are. We are not easily intimidated by threats and by dire consequences. We want to serve God for real. Not because of our survival, not because of our of our successes. And so the prophets who come and, and predict doom, 
it doesn't do it for the Jewish people. We are here to relate to God in, a, in an intimate relationship, not one based on reward and punishment. So although there is reward and punishment, that's not what we're going to focus on. That's not what's going to motivate us. And that's why we are still here. If it was based on rewards, we haven't had that many rewards lately. Like in the last 2,000 years, we've had plenty of aches and pains. A lot of the agony, not too much ecstasy. And we're just as Jewish as we ever were. That is the story of Yonah. And that is the story of Jewish leadership. You give up everything, even your spiritual benefit, if it can help your fellow Jew, if it can help your people, if it can make the world a better place. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and hit the notification bell below for daily pearls of Jewish wisdom.